I'll give you a gift today of the sound of proteins. Um, as some of you might know, most living matter is built from proteins, like the cells in our skin, hair, eyes, and also viruses. Um, proteins are really the materials of choice by nature to build life. And uh, these proteins are encoded by what we call DNA, which is then translated into amino acids, which then assemble or fold into complex structures such as the virus. Like we're all hearing about the coronavirus, that virus is also made from proteins. Um, in fact, the protein in the, in the top center um, shows a part of that COVID-19 virus spike protein that actually leads to the infection of, of humans. And what you see in this uh, picture here is a uh, part of the genetic sequence of the pathogen of COVID-19. And there are about 30,000 letters of DNA in the virus, but we know very little about what these letters mean, what kind of proteins are formed, how the virus is actually built, um, and what the function is of these individual components of the machinery of the virus. Um, in fact, in general, scientists, we know very little about what type of proteins form from specific codes of DNA. And, Without understanding the language of DNA, the language of proteins, it's very difficult to develop treatments or vaccines. And so we have been thinking about ways to find other mechanisms to access the information stored in DNA, stored in proteins, specifically to have a direct connection of the information to our brains. So what we have been doing, we've been studying chemistry for many, many decades um, as humanity. And we're finding out that chemistry, the way we conventionally understand it really is wrong. Uh, molecules don't look like the pictures on the right hand side, even though most chemistry textbooks, when you open them, that's what you find in them. Chemistry um, really believe, behaves more like what's seen on the left. Molecules are continuously moving and vibrating. And these vibrations, these movements are because at the scale of atoms and molecules, everything follows the laws of quantum chemistry, which really means that everything is waves and vibrations. So these pictures of waves and vibrations is so what we have something that we can actually relate with when we think about vibrations of strings, for instance. In fact, we can actually make these molecular vibrations audible, just like we just heard uh, somebody strumming a guitar, and we can similarly make vibrations in a protein in a molecule audible. And this translation of structure to sound allows us to hear molecules, which enables a direct connection to our brains. We can hear slight differences such as mutation or structural changes, like when the virus, the protein in a virus binds to the proteins in the human cell, we could hear that. We can actually understand that process through sound. And the reason why we're doing this is because our brains are very effective in processing information or structure through sound. And in just a few seconds, we can recognize even very subtle changes of, of a structure of a molecule of genetic information. So what you hear here is the sound of a larger protein molecule. So this is sort of the equivalent of a guitar, but now you hear a protein. And what you hear is a musical representation of, a, of the protein's complex hierarchical structure across scales. Again, it begins from the scale of DNA, to the amino acids, to the proteins, to the assembly of proteins in a larger structure. And so the question is, how is the sound generated? And the, the, the amazing thing is that each building block of, amino, of proteins are called amino acids. So what you hear now um, sounds like an alarm bell, but actually these are the fundamental building blocks of sounds from the amino acids, which are the structures encoded by DNA. And, what we can do is we can use these building blocks and design and create a structural representation in audible space of a larger protein. And um, these sort of audible fingerprints that we have now of these 20 amino acids of the genetic information um, are all the chemical Lego bricks. Nature is like Lego. It builds life out of these 20 amino acids to make, create complicated structures. And um, in a more complicated representation of a larger protein, of course, you don't just have the individual letters of information. We have information also about the structure, whether a sequence is forming a loop or a helix. Uh, and you can imagine this being like a guitar solo playing over a drum and a bass player. You have multiple levels of information. And this is what you just heard on the, on the previous slide. Now, recently we focused our attention on, the, on some of the proteins found in the pathogen of COVID-19. And we've particularly looked at the spike protein. You've already seen an image a few minutes ago. Um, these are little crowns sticking out of the virus. These are very important proteins in this, in this virus because these are the proteins that actually cause the infection. They attach to the human cell. And with music, with a musical representation 
and off of this protein, we can immediately capture within just a few minutes, seconds, um, many, many different relevant features of this complex biological structure and connect it with our brain. So we have another way of understanding this, this particular protein. And I'm gonna show you now, or you can listen now how this sounds like. Um, this is a translation now of this protein structure to sound to render a musical representation of the virus spike protein. What you see on the on the picture is actually the spike protein. Now a little more detailed view that you can recognize from the image already. This is a very complex structure. It's a very large protein, and the, the music, the entire composition, the entire piece is about one hour and fifty minutes long. And I'll be uh, sharing a link with you to SoundCloud where you can listen to the entire piece and enjoy that, and, and really have another way of understanding the virus and all the impacts it has. In this particular way of creating the music, we used classical instruments to reflect a structure in music. We have assigned a unique note to each amino acid, which is encoded by the DNA. I've also coded structural details um, in uh, note length, spacing, and overlaying melodies. And uh, if, you, if you study the music, you'll recognize it's actually very complex. It has um, dozens and dozens of layers of sound, many, many millions of notes uh, that represent the structure. And it also features a concept called counterpoint, which is a very important compositional method used um, as one of the first composers using was Johann Sebastian Bach um, hundreds of years ago. And we've discovered that these counterpoint um, compositional techniques are also found in the creation of proteins. And what we have found is that protein music is actually counterpoint music. So look, one of the questions we're exploring right now is has Bach perhaps already discovered some of the underlying structural design principles in the materials that build up our brain, our body, our cells and viruses. And we're hoping to find out what the connections are. Another really exciting opportunity is um, because we have a way of mapping um, amino acids in the material to sound, we can hear materials now, we can also go the other way around. We can actually uh, make materials out of sound because we have a unique mapping. We can listen to sound and assign what amino acids, what genetic information made up that sound, and we can then build materials from that. And uh, we have been using this um, to think about ways to maybe using sound as a material method to create maybe drugs that target certain diseases, um, and maybe use compositional methods of creating new music to develop antibodies, for instance. And uh, another way we have been using this is to use computers. And we've all heard about AI, which is, I think, one of the most exciting technologies emerging in, in these uh, last several years and decades. Uh, AI is very powerful. So what we have done, we have used um, the composition, the, create, the, the proteins found hundreds of different coronaviruses that exist in nature and trained an AI, let the AI listen to all these different sounds of all these many different species of coronaviruses and let it generate new music that represents the kinds of proteins that nature has not yet invented. And perhaps we can use this to identify antibodies from the melody of structures found in this, in this structure. So what you hear here is the sound of a new protein generated by an AI. Um, so this is a, a music that we have translated back into an actual protein, which is a result of the AI listening to a very large number of different coronavirus species. And uh, one of the things we're exploring right now is whether this music, these proteins that we can derive from the music might actually hold the secret or key to an antibody potentially. Um, more recently, we're also focusing on a couple other directions. We are developing a musical model of the virus itself, but also the attachment of the virus to the human cell, especially the interaction of the virus with the human cell receptor ACE2. And piano composition is a musical reflection of infection. That's the moment during which the virus interacts with the cell. So if a microscope into the details of the molecular motion that are happening as the virus infects our bodies. Uh, through music, we've learned to speak the language of life. Um, these proteins are really the, the building blocks of life and music can be a way of accessing this information. And we hope this might revolutionize our ability to understand life, treat diseases, and potentially develop new medical technologies and biomaterials. And as, as you can see from these uh, thoughts, uh, music is everywhere, matter is sound, we can make viruses and materials into sound, but also sound is matter. We can use sound to create real material from it. Thank you very much for your attention.